What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's some of my final thoughts ahead of the game week 25 deadline. And we're going to start off, as we seem to every single week in this video, talking about Mitrovic, who was, of course, flagged last week and he was out with the squad. And then Marco Silva talked about him again earlier this week and said he wasn't sure if he'd be back. This is the latest from yesterday's press conference. Um, so team news, nothing new apart from Mitro. It will be difficult for him to be ready. Today, he was on the pitch outside let's see it will be difficult he had a session outside doing specific work so that makes it sound like as of Thursday he wasn't yet in team training which isn't great he did go on to say that he would be assessed today on Friday and then they would make a decision now for anyone that's not sure about whether or not they want to sell him the Fulham versus Wolves game is the first game of game week 25 so we might get some early team news now if the question is who is going to give that early team news I don't know and obviously you have to kind of check on Twitter and then hope that the person that's saying it is legit and I'll try and cover that on the deadline stream as well but there's also every chance that we don't get any news either now if we don't get news um, I am definitely selling him if we do get news uh, that he starts I probably will still sell him anyway because I think when you look at the fixtures after 25 Brentford away Arsenal at home Liverpool away in 28 that fixture might not even be on it just doesn't seem like you need to hold on to him necessarily. Now, for what it's worth, if there's no major upgrade that you can make and you do find out that he starts, then Wolves at home is a pretty good fixture. And I wouldn't worry about having to play in Brentford away or even necessarily Arsenal at home either because at the end of the day, he's absolutely nailed on uh, when he's fit and he may still have penalties as well. And even if he doesn't, he always gets kind of 80 to 90 minutes. And in game week 27, you've obviously got the double for... Uh, Brentford as well so a lot of people might look to move him on so I don't I think if we don't get any updates we have to assume there's a huge doubt about whether or not he's going to play like he might be in the squad but he could be on the bench that's a possibility as well so that's the latest I think it all depends on what your team looks like about whether or not you should get rid of him but without news I'd be really doubtful about whether or not he plays I think in terms of best replacements if you want a short-term punt then obviously Darwin's got the double game week if you want someone that covers game week 25 blank and game week 28 blank then someone like Watkins or Zhao Felix from uh, Chelsea are probably your best bets so I just want to quickly talk about Rashford but before I do I want to make it clear I'm not saying he's injured and I'm not trying to scaremonger or anything like that but it may well change people's transfers this week so I do want to discuss it um, I'm recording this on Friday morning unfortunately I can't wait until all the press conferences happen because it is a Friday deadline but Ten Hag should hold a press conference ahead of the Carabao Cup so I'm sure he'll be asked about Rashford so you should get a clearer picture later but I saw this um, screenshot going around it's from Rashford's Instagram and the emoji kind of implies that he's maybe got some kind of a knock even if it's a minor one now that is investigative journalism in 2023 right checking out what people's emojis are on Instagram but I watched the game last night and kind of late into the second half he did go down and he did get some treatment now he played on for a little while and I think he only got subbed in like the 87th minute but I tweeted at the time that it looked like Ten Hag asked him if he was okay when he came off and Rashford kind of said he was so there was maybe at least some worry there that he you know picked up some kind of injury or a knock or something like that so there is a possibility but what does that mean for FPL now for most people I would still try and hold on to him if you can the only way this would really change your transfers if suddenly by removing Rashford you can do a huge upgrade elsewhere because if he is injured and it is going to be for maybe one or two games, then he's got a blank in 25, he's probably going to blank in 28, and if he's going to miss one or two of Liverpool and Southampton, then there's not really any worries about what points he might get, it's going to be very minimal. So if Ten Hag comes out and says, yeah, he's picked up a knock, he might be out for a week or so, then possibly you could get rid of him, but I suspect this is just going to be a minor thing, which he says is fine, and he'll probably play the Carabao Cup final, and unless it's that huge upgrade for your team that's going to make it better for 25-20, 26, 27 I would probably just hold on to him but I think this image and, and talk about Rashford is going to go around a little bit more this morning so I just wanted to cover it for what it's worth it hasn't changed anything for me I'm just going to bench him and then hope he's back for game week 26 so let's quickly talk about Nathan Patterson because I know there's quite a few owners out there that were hoping he'd be back for game week 25 even if it just meant like one or two points but that isn't looking very likely so I saw this tweet on Fantasy Football Scout uh, and Sean Dykes was talking about players returning from injury and it says that Nathan Patterson's return to training has been delayed due to a minor knock now there was an under 21 game recently that Patterson played in and he did seem to take a knock to his knee and I think that's what he's been struggling with he did play on but eventually he was substituted 
instituted. So I don't know if that's what it was. But if he's not back in team training yet, I think we can assume he's going to miss the Aston Villa game for sure. And at most, he might be back in the squad for the Arsenal game. But I think there's no chance that he starts. And so you're probably hoping for a one-point cameo at most. So I think this could be the excuse to sell him on. You don't have to sell him. If you've got like 10 or 11 decent... Uh, players or you don't have the cash and you just want to hold him on your bench for a little bit longer then that's fair enough but I think the way that Coleman's playing probably means that Patterson's not just going to come in and just be the right back for every single game once he's fit it's going to take some time by the time that happens you're probably going to use chips anyway so if you want the excuse to sell him this is it I would even take an additional minus four whether or not you've taken no hits four point hit eight point hit 12 point hit I would just look at this in isolation if I've got Patterson I am spending four points to go to someone like Tarkovsky because yes of course Tarkovsky could get two appearance points in each game four points but concede so many goals he only ends up with one or two right and then you're down like two or three points because of the hit but the upside is he plays in both games gets appearance points gets a clean sheet in one loses the clean sheet in the other maybe gets a goal in one loses clean sheet in both games and suddenly not only are you up like two three four points right and it all adds up but you've also got a player you can rely on on your bench for the next few weeks that also plays in 28 and also plays in 32 so I think the upside of taking that hit is worth it because the downside is a loss of like two, three, maybe four points. It's not massive in the grand scheme. Of course, if you're already making a different move, I know, I know like people have done like Shaw to Tarkovsky, for example, to fund a different move, then it might be harder because the lack of defenders this week to bring in might not be worth it. But even going for like a Kilman or someone like that at Wolves is probably worth the punt over just holding Patterson. If it's going to affect your longer term transfers because you, you, know, you need that cash, then fair enough, just hold on to him but I think for most people you can justify a minus four to get rid of him no matter how many hits you've already taken obviously if you've got loads of money in the bank to go to like Trent or Robertson then just do that instead but for most people it's probably going to be a sideways move to Kilman or Tarkovsky or someone like that so talking of really cheap defenders, let's quickly discuss Bueno at Wolves. And I'm not saying you should bring him in. This is more for people that own him that are wondering whether or not they should move him on. He's not injured or anything like that that we know of. It's more just a minutes concern. So you can see the bit I've circled in red. It might be a bit too small for you to see, but basically that's the minutes over the last few games. So we've got 61 minutes against Bournemouth in game week 24, 45 minutes against Southampton the game before, didn't play at all against Liverpool, 80, 82, 78. So his minutes are kind of sporadic. You can't rely on him playing or not but it is a different situation to Patterson in that I'd be pretty confident he'll get at least one start in game week 25 and if it's the Fulham game where Mitrovic might be missing who knows maybe he'll go and get a clean sheet or an attack and return or something like that but he should get you I would say at least two points because even if he plays in one of the games and loses the clean sheet he could easily come off the bench in the other one as well so in this case I don't necessarily think it's worth a minus four if you're in a position where you've got a really good squad, you're already well set up before um, coming into this week. So maybe you've got nine, ten players, a decent amount of double game weekers, and you've got the luxury of upgrading them to someone else, right? And I, I'm really talking probably Arsenal or Liverpool defenders mainly. Then that's a different story. I would do that because I don't think Bueno is this great player that you need to hold on long term because it's Spurs at home, Newcastle away. The game in 28 might not be on, but for most people, you've got bigger issues to deal with. He should get at least one start. He could come off the bench in the other one I don't think you're going to be in a situation where you get minus points so I'd probably just hold on to him and not take a minus four so I did answer a more general question about game week 25 free hit in yesterday's video but I didn't have time to discuss the kind of team that I would put together if I was using the chip this week so that's what I'm going to do here now if I'm using the free hit in a double game week I want to try and get as much upside as possible by maximizing the number of double game week players and I think for the most part this team kind of picks itself so seven of the spots are going to be taken up with Haaland because despite it being a double game week he's got Bournemouth away so I think I would probably put him in and then triple Liverpool and triple Arsenal now with Liverpool I think Trent and Salah kind of pick themselves I think for minutes potential uh, attack and returns as well they are the two that I would go with the third spot is kind of up for discussion I've gone for Darwin Nunez here you could go for Robertson as well I'm just not sure I fully trust the Liverpool defense given how they've defended recently although Crystal Palace away and Wolves at home there is a chance for at least one maybe two clean sheets and they are both attacking defenders but I think for this one-off 
you know, going for that uh, maximum upside, I would just hope that Darwin Nunez gets two starts and go for him. Similarly with Arsenal, I think I would definitely pick Saka and Gabriel. Saka's the best option from Arsenal. You could go for triple Arsenal attack, but it's all about that kind of domino effect. So if you go for, say, Odegaard instead of Sarabia from Wolves, then you've got to fill that defender spot. Now, you don't have to go for double game week players, but it's not like there's a load of single game week players that are great this week. Like, try picking a Man City defender that's definitely going to start so I'd rather have Gabriel in there and a Wolves attacker rather than an Odegaard and a Wolves defender instead so again it's just that domino effect I've put in Ketia in here but I did say on yesterday's video if I was captaining an Arsenal player that wasn't Saka I would have Odegaard ahead I think the reason I've done that is just to have someone like Grealish on the bench but you could absolutely just have a 3-5-2 with Odegaard and just put someone else uh, up front on your bench instead maybe even like Mope from Everton or Nyonto from Leeds or someone like that so I think if I was using the chip this week I probably would end up on a 3-5-2 but Nketi is great as well so if you want to go for him over Odegaard you definitely can um, and then I've gone for triple Everton as well now ultimately I want a double game week goalkeeper I can't go for Allison or Ramsdale because I'm already tripled up so it's really Pickford versus Saar now I think Pickford's going to concede against Arsenal and Wolves are going to concede against Liverpool so the best shot of a clean sheet is Ever uh, sorry Aston Villa at home for Everton or Fulham away for Wolves now if Mitrovic is out maybe that helps Wolves but ultimately I'm just targeting the home fixture which is why I've gone for Pickford over Saar and Tarkovsky over Craig Dawson or someone like that if you wanted to hedge your bets a bit you could change either the goalkeeper or the defender I'm not actually sure which one I would change I guess I mean there's a chance of clean uh, there's a chance of save points for both Pickford and Saar so I think I would probably go for Pickford and maybe change Tarkovsky to Craig Dawson because he's lot, got a lot of goal threat as well but I don't actually mind the double Everton uh, defense and then the other two spots are the midfielders and I've gone for McNeil and Sarabia and again there's not really too many forwards from those teams that I like like Cunha doesn't necessarily get I might have pronounced that wrong he doesn't necessarily get 60 minutes every game I think he's only played over 60 minutes twice in the last five fixtures um, then you've got Calvert-Lewin who's not fit Morpé, I'm just not really a massive fan of. And Sims, you just don't know if he's going to start twice. And even if he does, is he going to get any returns? So again, I feel like it's easier just to fill those Everton and Wolves spots with midfielders. And look, there are some good single game week players you could go for. Mares, Grealish, Foden from Man City. If you know who's going to start, don't ask me. I've got no idea. Um, you know, Bowen against Nottingham Forest at home. But I just think I want a free hit. It's a double game week. I want double game week players. McNeil's on set pieces. You know I, you know I love him. And Sarabia for Wolves is playing quite central and quite far forward as well. And I'm going to talk about him a little bit later. I think if I wasn't so stuck on going for McNeil, I may even swap to Sarabri is my uh, punt this week so that's the kind of team I would go for like I said you can shift around which three Arsenal and Liverpool players you want you can decide not to go for Sarabri and McNeil and take single game week players it's completely up to you but if I was using the chip it would look something like this this might not be the final team but it wouldn't be far off so I just want to really quickly talk about my team because not much has changed since the team selection video like nothing I've seen in Europe has changed my mind or anything that managers have said about player availability so this is what the team looks like I haven't made any early transfers I will do them on the deadline stream later I've got two free transfers and my issues are that I've got three players that are blanking in Fernandez Trippier and Rashford obviously Greenwood doesn't really get any minutes off the bench so I need to sell Fernandez to fund other moves I want to get rid of Ake no matter what Pep says about Laporte unless he rules him out for like a month then maybe I think about keeping Ake because then he'd be more nailed on but he's still not guaranteed to start so I think he's one of the bigger issues in my team and obviously Mitrovic I've already spoken about I just feel like now is probably the best time to get rid of him so I'll use three transfers which would cost a minus four to get Trent McNeil and Darwin and it's not like I think McNeil is this great player that's going to score me loads of points but I'm just looking for a cheap player this week and I think he's better than the single game week options so I'm just going to go for that upside of a double game we can hope that it, it kind of you know pays off it may not he may just get two points who knows but either way he lets me get that triple up on Liverpool which I feel like will be somewhat of a differential this week and if it pays off happy days if it doesn't then I'll worry about that in game week 26 the only additional transfer I'm thinking of is Edison to Pickford right because Pickford's got a double game week now I'm fully aware of the narrative that I've brought in Edison for a double game week or actually two double game weeks 
weeks for a hit and it didn't work out. And now I'm thinking about taking him out ahead of one of his best fixtures all season for a hit to get a double game week player. For what it's worth, I do think there's a very good chance that Man City get a clean sheet this week. And if that happens, even if Edison gets no save points like he doesn't usually, six points plus the four point hit is 10 points. Do I think that Pickford is going to get 10 or more? I'm not quite sure about that. The only reason I'm thinking about it is because in game week 28 if all if everything goes as we think it will in terms of which teams will blank neither Edison or Ward will play and I might need a goalkeeper so not only would it give me a double game week goalkeeper this week but I'd also hedge my bets that if I don't free hit in 28 I'd also have Pickford ready there and he also plays in game week 32 now I might have used my wild card by that point but it's just an additional factor of why I might go for him but ultimately all those things are far in the future, and I might want a different goalkeeper by that point. And I do think there's a good chance of a Man City clean sheet. So I don't think I will take the hit, especially when I don't need the money. That doesn't really help me too much in terms of my transfers. Like, it's not going to suddenly give me so much more money that I can go from McNeil to a different player. So I think this is what the team will look like. A minus four, eight double game week players. You've got triple Liverpool, triple Arsenal, double Everton somehow. Man City goalkeeper and forward, and then Minks, who doesn't really have any goal threat whatsoever but at least he's nailed and he's got a fixture but to be honest I'm hoping he can see so that's my team Salah is still captain I think that will hold although I'm a little bit worried about Saka because he's great all right, let's answer some of your questions. So is it necessary to rip our teams apart by taking loads of hits just to get to double or triple Liverpool players? Or is it fine to just go with Salah? And basically, it's fine to do whatever you think is best for your team. That could be zero Liverpool players. It could just be Salah, like you've said, or it could be a double or a triple up. This week is really no different to any other. You're assessing your team. Who are the most important players to remove and who are the best replacements for those players? Now, the reason that I like Liverpool players is they've got... A double game week right in front of us of Crystal Palace away and Wolves at home, which is decent on paper. I think the way that people are thinking about Liverpool players, they're a little bit you know, more sceptical than they would be. So I don't think Liverpool players are going to be differential, but they're probably going to be more differential than they normally would be. Yes, they've got Man United at home in 26, which is going to be difficult, but then they've got Bournemouth away in 27, and they've got that outside shot at playing Fulham in game week 28. Now, I've got all my chips available, so if I triple up on Liverpool and they don't play in 28, it shouldn't affect me too much. I've got the chips to deal with it, and I can use transfers and hits and stuff like that, which is why I'm doing it. But I'm also assessing my own team and if we quickly go back to it my weak links are really Mitrovic who is who is a doubt to play and Ake that even if he starts this week I'm not sure I can rely on him going forward and because of the blank game week in 25 for Man United and the probable one in 28 I feel like it's an okay time to get rid of Fernandez. so if I can get rid of Fernandez and that funds me moves for Darwin and Trent that seems fine a Darwin and Trent essential no but when I'm replacing Mitrovic and Ake there's not really an argument against it right if I didn't have all my chips available, like if I'd use my wild card, I'd use my free hit, or I'd use both, I would probably avoid Darwin. I would just get someone like Ollie Watkins instead, who's nailed on to start pretty much every single game, definitely plays in 28 and has got a double in 29. But I'm not in that situation. I've got a pretty well set up team for this week. I've got what I would consider the best three Arsenal players. I've already got Salah. I've already got Tarkovsky. I've got two players from Man City. Tyro Mings is a bit rubbish, but he plays in all those weeks I need him. So I have the luxury of just spending a minus four. As things stand, maybe I'll get screwed over by press conferences to take out one player that's blanking to fund a move for two Liverpool players that have got a double game week and again it comes back to that point that with everyone a little bit skeptical about Liverpool players it just makes me want them that little bit more because if they can find some form and get some goals and some clean sheets then suddenly there's a big you know chance of a huge green arrow right it could be the opposite they could all blank and I'll get another red arrow but I'm willing to take that kind of risk for a team that we know what they're capable of even if we haven't seen that recently so is it necessary? Of course it's not. For a lot of you, like for example, if you've got Salah because you've sold De Bruyne, right, and you've got Harry Kane and you don't want to go to Darwin, that's fine. I don't think it's that bad to keep hold of Harry Kane. But if the move is Kane to Darwin to fund a midfielder to Salah, then I would probably do it. So you have to assess your own team. Who's the most important to remove and who are the best replacements for those players? If it's Liverpool players, just go with it.
All right, so is it worth doing transfers that you might want to reverse for a hit, theoretically costing eight points, for example, Tony to Darwin, or stay with 10 and keep Tony? Now, in the question you've put might want to reverse, I'm going to assume that you will want to reverse it, uh, and this is how I would think about it. You have to assess each move on its own merits, but for this one, this is how I think about it, right? So Tony's out for a minus four. Worst case scenario, Klopp doesn't tell us about an injury, and Darwin misses both games, so he gets you zero points, you're four points down. Obviously, he could start the first game and get a red card but let's just assume he gets you zero points and then you have to reverse the transfer so that's now eight points you're down more realistic is darwin starts one game and gets to 60 minutes he comes off the bench in the other one and gets you another one point so that's three points you're five points down now i think that darwin will play 90 to 120 minutes minimum across the both uh, across the two games and the double and i think he's fully capable of getting at least one goal in that time so that's seven points before bonus now of course you could still be down overall because if that's all he gets and you have to take a four point hit to get him in then a four point hit to get rid of him you're down one point but for me that is worth the risk for a player that is definitely capable of getting more than seven points and obviously stuff could change down the line right if Gakpo or Firmino or Jota end up picking up a knock that would put uh, Darwin's minutes up so you might want to keep him if Tony gets a yellow card in game week 26 then he'd be one away from missing two games so he could miss one from the double so you might decide that you don't want him back anymore it might be that other injuries mean you've got a different way to get Tony and you just keep hold of Darwin it could be that you bring Darwin in he only plays in one of the matches doesn't even play in the other one and then completely loses his place right there's there's best and worst case scenarios both sides of the coin but for that particular move I think it's worth the risk, especially if you're not 100% sure that you would reverse it. Because Tony cannot punish you this week. He has no fixture. He can't get any points. So I would personally take the upside of what Darwin could do. But if you don't want to do that, right, and you think that Darwin might not get 90 to 120 minutes, and even if he does, he'll continue finishing poorly or something like that, then don't make the move. It's, it's really about what you are comfortable with, but that is how I would kind of assess those type of moves. I think the one thing to remember with Darwin, I don't necessarily think he's a good long-term pick i think if you were looking at a different move i can't really think of one off the top of my head but one where the player you were bringing in is good with minutes and if you have to hold on on uh, to him it's not really a big issue that might be a bit different but even in this case i still think i would probably do it but i'm quite confident in liverpool and i do like targeting double game week so i might not be the best person to ask for this all right let's talk about cheap everton defenders is coleman a good pick over tarkovsky he's on set pieces and playing out wide plus he's favored by deitch and patterson is out so just on the set piece pieces right because it's a friday deadline there's a lot to go through in this video i haven't gone and checked but i feel like mcneil takes a lot of their set pieces so i don't know how many coleman is on but might have that wrong everton fans let me know down in the comments below i think on the point that he's favored by sean dykes that's impossible to know right now because for the last three games when sean dykes has been in charge patterson has been injured so we don't know that coleman is favored now my own personal point of view is coleman has played quite well and sean dykes doesn't seem like the type of manager that would want to change something that's working but also Coleman is 34 Patterson's a lot younger so when there is maybe a bit of fixture congestion like with double game weeks like this if Patterson was fit would he get used possibly now for what it's worth I think for the next few weeks Coleman is absolutely fine so if you fancy going for him over Tarkovsky I don't think it's a huge issue but I wouldn't say we can you know say with any certainty that he is definitely favored by Sean Dyche we just can't know that in terms of whether he is just a better pick than Tarkovsky let's say Coleman is absolutely nailed on I don't even know if that's true either because yes he does play wide and get forward but I wouldn't expect the goal that he got against Leeds to happen too often I guess he could get you assists as well and when you watch Everton games recently they are kind of trying to target Tarkovsky from corners now maybe at some point the opposition will work that out and they'll change it but he does seem like a bit of threat you know from everything we've seen he probably is absolutely nailed on right he's an old Burnley favorite of Sean Dyche as well so if I was picking right now I would still go Tarkovsky over Coleman but I think in the short term Coleman's a perfectly good pick as well all right who's the best midfield punt for this week only has to be eight million or less no one from Arsenal Man City or Liverpool I'm moving them on to a Brighton midfielder next week so if you're definitely going to get someone like Matoma March or McAllister in game week 26 I don't know why you wouldn't go for the potential and it is only potential up 
upside of a double game week uh, this week instead. And I know people say things like, if it wasn't a double game week, you wouldn't be considering them. And I think that's great, but it is a double game week. In the same way that if Salah and Saka didn't have double game weeks, I'd probably be captain in Haaland against Bournemouth this week. But they do, so I'm not, right? So that's what I'd be looking at. Wolves or an Everton player, because you've ruled out Liverpool and Arsenal. Now, I do like McNeil from Everton, but if you haven't been following along, I will just say, three years ago, I put him on a bench boost and he got me 14 points so I am very much biased and a little bit nostalgic about him as a pick but if I look at it objectively I do think he probably is the best cheap option from Everton I know some people like a woe because his minutes are nailed on but I feel like with set pieces and crosses and stuff from open play McNeil's probably a little bit more attacking it is worth noting that Damari Gray is always someone that Sean Dyche could use and he probably is one of their better players but I think we have to note that since Sean Dyche has come in, he hasn't been starting and McNeil has, who obviously they work together uh, at Burnley, right? So I think he looks pretty nailed right now. And I saw a report on The Athletic that says he's pretty key to the way Sean Dyche wants to play. So I don't think there's any issues there. So I like him from Everton, but I am very biased about that. I think if I didn't have that bench boost story to tell, I'd probably be looking at Sarabia because I think fixture-wise, they do have to play two away games, but both Fulham and Liverpool are kind of similar in the fact their attacks are better than their defences and Wolves will get chances and as a midfielder Sarabia is playing quite far forward and there's a little bit of pedigree there as well so I think if you are going one week punt only there is a chance that Sarabia is probably better than the Everton players the only thing I would say about Everton is They've got a guaranteed fixture in 28 and 32 and their fixtures in 26 and 27 are probably slightly better overall than Wolves. So if you got into a position where, I don't know, let's say worst case scenario, you get this cheap player in, but Rashford gets injured, then straight away I'm thinking, well, I'll do Rashford to the Brighton midfielder instead. It might just be that I do Rashford and McNeil to two Brighton midfielders, but I'm just kind of thinking, not necessarily outside the box, but just something else to kind of think about when you make this move that if you get stuck with them it might be better to have the Everton player instead of the Wolves one but ultimately if it's a one-week punt only I think there's a lot of merit of looking at Sarabia if not I think McNeil, uh, McNeil is the one I just don't think there's necessarily a better single game week player I've got Bowen on the screen and they have got Nottingham Forest at home so I do like him but would I go for him over a double game weeker I don't think I would I wouldn't go for anyone from Leicester like if Rodrigo was around, maybe him against Southampton, maybe Ward Prowse against Leeds, but none of them really stand out as better options than the double game week. So that's what I would do. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Hit subscribe, and I'll catch you again later for the deadline stream. Mm -hmm.